Hello, my name is Roland Vijay. I'm with the Modeling of Watershed Systems Project, and I'm going to talk to you uh, briefly about the GIS Weasel, which is a uh, preprocessor, largely, for s deriving uh, maps of features and parameters for use with PRMS, or really uh, a number of other kinds of models, watershed models. This uh, presentation is meant to be viewed in conjunction with a separate recording, which actually shows a demonstration of the GIS Weasel software. So here is the home page to get this uh, software. Um, it's been around for really over 15 years by now, and so it's pretty mature. Um, there's a, a big document describing not only how to use it, but there's a large appendix which helps you understand how parameters are derived. And especially if you want to use the GIS Weasel to set up models other than PRMS, pretty helpful to see the exact methodology and decide whether those techniques are actually appropriate for that other model. So uh, because this is a uh, long-standing piece of software, the technology on which it is built is now a little bit dated, uh, still fully functional and totally accurate and useful, but um, it relies on workstation arc info and it uses the grid raster processing software module underneath workstation. So, when I say workstation, I put a little screen grab. This is pretty simple, but I really want users to see this, and if they don't have the ability to call up this kind of window on their computer, then they probably don't have workstation Arc Info. And when I say Arc Info or Arc GIS, I am not referring to desktop, which is the, the newer, more modern incarnation of, of what we think of with Arc GIS. So, uh, this software is great but it is not what the GIS Weasel is built on top of. So you need to have that workstation software. So good news is that if you do have a desktop license and that software running on your computer, you, you've actually purchased the license for the workstation software. And some system administrators are just choosing to not install the workstation software, but they can get it, they, they've paid for it, they're allowed to have it, and they're allowed to install it, and that shouldn't be too big a deal. So uh, for what it's worth, uh, Arc Info is up to 10.2, soon to be 10.3 in terms of the version number, and Workstation was frozen at 9.3, and that works just fine, and that's what we use across the U.S. Geological Survey. So we don't really provide support on how to set all that up. You just need to talk to your own system administrators, or if you're doing your own administration, then you need to take care of that. So uh, again, we're built on top of Workstation, and it uses the Arc Macro language, which was the scripting language for that platform and uh, it's pretty much self-contained. It doesn't require anything like registry edits on Windows or compiling or anything like that. You just download it and open it up and there's some installation instructions on the website which help you uh, uh, tweak the properties for the shortcut that makes it even easier to start that software. So please read those in case you get any hiccups during the install process. Other requirements are a digital elevation model. It's pretty lightweight requirements. Um, this is because it is our info workstation you need it to be in a grid format so it cannot use some of the more modern ones such as GeoTIFF um, it is strongly recommended that you project your digital elevation model into something like an equal area projection so don't use lat long as your coordinate system and even an equal angle uh, projection is, is not recommended mostly because when you do things like calculate the areas of your features like a hydrologic response unit you want a projection that will give you accurate numbers. So um, that's really the only required input data set. Um, during the setup part of the GIS Weasel, you will be asked to define the basin or area of interest, and you can uh, have a pre existing outline. In fact, we can almost discourage that. You're really recommended to just be able to define the outlet point and let the software find the contributing area based on analysis of the DEM. Another requirement um, is the data bin. So in terms of delineation of your features, by and large, most folks rely on the, the digital elevation model almost exclusively. Not a requirement. If you want to delineate on the basis of some other ancillary data, then you need to show up with those data available. And again, those should be in an arc info grid format, and they should be in the same coordinate system as the digital elevation model. Um, by and large, the data bin could be used for this, but the data bin is specifically engineered for helping to derive a standard set of parameters specifically uh, 
oriented towards the PRMS watershed model. So these are the kinds of data layers that we have in the data bin and we'll show you a little bit later on uh, a schematic of what that should look like. And so if you can't quite get everything you need off of the screen grab in this PowerPoint, it's definitely straight from the GIS Weasel user's manual so you can go back and refer to that. Another key if you need to build your own data bin is that when you download the GIS Weasel, there's a data bin in there, and this is just for a little sample watershed, but you can look at the structure and naming conventions of all the contents in there, and you would just mimic that in terms of recreating your own data bin. So this is the general structure where you've got uh, ArcInfo workspaces, essentially directories in red, you've got your ArcInfo grids in uh, the blue boxes, and then the yellow tables are info tables inside of that workspace and then the uh, you see the code schemes associated with the grids in these different layers so more detail on this is provided in the GIS Weasel users manual and you can look there for definitions